They told me I was too young. They told me I needed more training. Huh? I told them to drop dead. How ironic. I don't know how I survived that fall. Something strange must have happened. My pulse is beating like a drum, but my blood is running cold. I'm not sure what's going on, but I came here with a question. And I'm gonna find the answer if it kills me. Welcome everybody to Crypt of the Necrodancer. The acclaimed rhythm-based roguelike. As you saw there, it is still an alpha. I've already made a bunch of progress into this game, but why don't we jump right in with the tutorial. You press the R keys if on the beat to move. This, I'll have to remember what Uncle Eli taught me. Uncle Eli is not in this game as Every of yet. Planet has a predictable pattern, he said. Learn that pattern and you won't suffer so much as a scratch. We have a dagger. If you try to move not on the beat, this happens. Bad things. It's not good not being able to move, so try to stick with the beat. The Gold green guy didn't move at all. And this blue one just moves up and then down. By attacking from the side, I'll never get hurt. Gold is generally a good thing to have. <laughs> a broadsword, not as sharp as I'm used to, but I bet it can still take out three enemies in one shot. Use the shovel to dig things. Looks like those skeletons put their hands in the air when they're about to jump. If I'm in the way when they move, it's gonna hurt. They put their hands in the air when they just don't care. That trap is mostly harmless, but Eli warned me of deadlier traps to come. I... I don't know. I, I think I'm stuck. I don't think I can get around this one. As you can see there, the arrow traps move you in a direction. Good luck! Alright, so, jumping right in here to Zone 1. We start out actually with a broadsword, which is kind of nice. That was a diamond. It lets you uh, buy things back in the hub area, the lobby. Since I bought everything, I don't really need the diamonds anymore. So, they're not really of much importance to me. Instead, we have all the upgrades that you can possibly have at this point, so this zone is probably going to be pretty easy for me. Oh yeah, that's what the monkeys do. Ow. Oh no, I lost half a heart out of five hearts. What am I going to do? Anyway, so as you can see, it's basically a lot about just traversing through the dungeon, not dying, killing enemies, and collecting as much gold as possible until the end. Another thing to note, you might see a shiny thing in that piece of dirt. This one. Break it and you get a diamond. Fireball spell as well from that secret chest. Uh, throughout these floors, which are, of course, randomly generated, you might find... Oh, oh, hello. You might find little hidden rooms. Those could have hidden chests inside, so... It's probably a wise idea to just look into each of those rooms when you find them, and just try to see what you can get. <laughs> Getting a torch as well, like I have, makes it a lot easier to see the rooms. Otherwise, you won't light up as many tiles and won't be able to see as much. There we go. Each chest color has a different meaning. Oh, by the way, this is a new trap. Stepping on this one. Tempo up. Not so bad. Alright, so red chests can give you food and use items. Purple chests can give you spells and scrolls and rings. Whoops. And black chests give you weapons, like this blood dagger. Now, I don't think I'm going to need the blood dagger. I prefer the extended range of broadsword. But, uh, the point of different items is that they have different ranges, and the point of different classes is that they have different effects. This is the shopkeeper. He sings. He's cool. Don't mess with him. Anyway, okay, so regular weapons just do really nothing special. They damage enemies. This dagger up here is Blood Dagger, so it's red, and what it means is that every certain number of enemies you kill, you'll get half a heart back. Pretty nice if you don't have much health. Anyway, on to the next floor. There are three floors per zone. This video is just going to be about zone one. As you can see, this shop does not have a door, so we're going to need to use our bomb to get in there see what we can buy. Ooh, the obsidian armor is very nice. Right here. Obsidian is a material that increases power along with 
your current groove chain. So as you kill enemies without messing up, or misstepping, or missing a beat, or etc., you build up your groove and that's going to increase your coin multiplier as well as power up any obsidian items that you have. I mean, this armor is going to get stronger if we get in the groove. These as well are ballet shoes, which go very well with obsidian items. Essentially, ballet shoes make it so that when you kill an enemy here, let me just get my groove up. As you can see, the flashing lights are now happening. Ballet shoes mean if I stop moving, it's not going to decrease my groove, meaning that my armor is pretty much going to be very, very powerful and basically guarantees my win for the rest of this run. How useful. Ah, yeah, look at that chest. Something seems suspicious about us to you? Go up next to it, and oh no, it has teeth! Luckily, it still drops an item. This is a long sword. Long swords have an extended range. Instead of doing to the left and right, they will go out in front of you. I personally prefer the long sword over the broad sword just because I like to be able to hit an extended range in front. Hey, look, a bomb. How nice. Look at all these traps down here. Those traps that look like little, well, trap doors. Basically, well, one, they drop you to the next floor, which isn't bad for speedruns, but they also drop you in the middle of a bunch of tough enemies and bosses, meaning that it could be your last trip to the next floor for that run. As you can see, those little ghost guys, the ones that follow you when your back is turned, will only move and be damageable when you're not looking at them. That was a Minotaur. He died. Rest in peace, Minotaur. Purple chest, what could be inside? Oh, a ring. Okay. This is a ring of luck. It will increase your, well, luck stat, and will mean that you're more likely to get better items, etc. Alright. One good use for these tempo up traps is that you can use them to kind of get around a little quicker when the going gets slow. Nice. Alright, next floor. As you might have noticed, we picked up a fireball spell earlier, which means that we can essentially do this. Woo! That'll reload as we kill enemies, so killing more enemies will get us more stuff. This is a pickaxe, it lets you dig things other than just the simple basic blocks, but it takes a certain number of hits depending on what the block is. This scroll is a magenta scroll. Actually, that's new. Let's see what it does. Oh, it's a shield scroll. Okay. Um, as I said before, this game is still in alpha, so there's lots of stuff being implemented as time goes on. So, expect as the series continues, series, not serious, as the series continues to have different things change regarding the game's mechanics. This is a red dragon, he's scary. Do not touch the fire. It will basically do a bunch of damage. Me with my five hearts and obsidian armor, actually I'm not too scared about it, but otherwise you want to learn how to kill those things efficiently without getting hit. Otherwise your runs will be getting cut short quite often. As you can see, our spell is recharged. This guy on the floor here with the little horns is a spike trap, and it'll basically just do damage to you if you step on it. It actually does quite a bit of damage, so try to avoid those guys at all costs. Let's see what's in here. Anything? If you basically walk around the secret room, you'll get rid of the possibility of any secret chest still being there. Still being in there, rather. Red bats like those are, that, like that one right there, are especially, especially, uh, can't speak today, especially annoying because they move on every beat, meaning that there's no easy way to line yourself up unless you happen to be moving in sync with it. I'll explain what that means when we find another one. Um, anything else in here? Oh, hello. Dude, I forgot how powerful the coin multiplier was. Wow. Uh, when you're playing in hardcore mode, which we'll get into later in the series, basically none of your lobby upgrades work. You start with two hearts, all the item pool is unlocked, and your coin multiplier only goes up to three. In this case, it goes up to four, which means I'm getting a lot of money, which I am quite pleased with. Alright. Ooh, ooh. Okay, glass longsword. Glass items are interesting in that they do incredible amounts of damage, but as soon as you get hurt, they break and become basically as useful as your first dagger in the game. Luckily I have this holster so I can keep my original sword for later, and since this is the last regular level in the zone, we can go on 
to the boss. Conga line in progress. Hello. As you can see, we're missing every seventh beat. Oh. So we just don't want to move. Bam! Killed him in one hit with the glass sword. Nice. And I believe that's it. There we go. We won. That was zone one. Coin source for 620. Not bad at all. So I think I'm going to cut that off here, and I'll see you guys next time when we tackle zone two and see what we can find within. Thanks for watching.